You all know what we're doing in this video. So let's get on with Palmer's Neverland Volume 3 with you. Just to tell you, I'm reading these through library books, so yeah, that's why it's taking a while to get them done if you're like on this video series. But anyway, let's get started with the FYI. This video will have some spoilers to chapters in Volume 3, so you've been warned. So let's get started. Chapter 17 of this up where Volume 2 left off with Gilda and Dawn. Dawn was trying to find the secret room doorway. Gilda thought about what Emma and Ray and Norman said. She and Dawn just couldn't believe and needed to know the truth. And they need to know what happened to Connie. Don could not open the secret door, though he was doing it all the wrong way, and Gilda was able to find it. Don wanted to know the real side of Isabella, not the one who acted innocent and, ha and happy around them. She wanted to know one that was selling children off to the demons as food when she didn't really know at the time. When they revealed the secret room to the... It went back to Norman and Ray and Emma in the library. Emma would, came back with a couple of books with William Minerva's name on the inside of the hardcover. There were inside all of the books she brought with an hour picture on them. Emma called it a book label with William Minerva's name and this way hit her on the head and said it was a book plate. A label is just who owns the book. The person who owned the book had came to the farm. Ray said that Minerva's books are all over the library and that Emma only brought a few of them. Norman questioned Emma what was the message left by William Minerva. Emma told him to look carefully and so he did until he realized when looking at the book plate. There were lines circling around the picture of the owl, and each circle had markings that were different in each book. Norman picked up quickly and found out that the circles were Morse code, and they agreed with him. The Morse code in the first book they read said, Truth, Danger, Doubt, Run. No one was surprised how he didn't know this before. Way said that the messages for it was messages like for them. Emma showed another book, and in the second book it read Farm, Monster, Harvest. Way pointed out there was no way the demons or Isabel had set this up. If the kids were to find out the secret, they will be shifted out immediately. Rules are everything. The message had came from someone outside. It was hidden from the adults and demons, and Ray said they should at least trust these for now. Norman asked why Ray called the Morse code from William Minerva these. Ray explained, unlike Emma, he was more suspicious. The man William Minerva could be an ally. But there is no telling if he's alive or dead, and Way said not to get the, their hopes up. This is this also oh, like annoys Emma. Norman got ex excited all of a sudden. William Nerva was an ally from outside the Graysville house. He knew the farm exists, and he is indirectly helping them. Emma agreed. Emma said that the message are only seen in the books. They don't need. They don't know what the labels with William Minerva's name were placed, and they were. And they're the only these books, including the one Ray was reading, has them. No one remembered this book that Ray was reading. It was the one that Ray showed them that was published in 2015. No one thought that at least the labels were attached after 2015. Norman asked if they had anything else. Ray asked if he meant the contents of each time of the book. They told Norman there was not much as all the dramas were verified, including the publishers and the years the books were published. And I asked Ray about this one. Ray didn't understand 
which meant Emma took out the book below to other books and looked at you. Emma pulled out the two other books. One had no Morse code on it, but the second one did. It read Promise. Also pointed out the contents of the two books. One was an adventure novel, and the other book was mythology. Emma also pointed out that there were some pages that were ripped, and that the book also didn't have Morse code. Norman added them up with Emma. Norman asked Emma if she thought these books in particular are special. Emma said yes, and they they will be important guide for them. Ray asked what he he guess was based on, and she said it was just a hunch of hers. This made Ray give her a face of not believing her, and Emma told him to stop giving her that look. Norman said it would it was worth looking into. Ray showed them the time, and Norman said that they had they should get going, and they agreed. And they said they need to get dinner ready. The panel goes back to Don and Yelda as Don uses Isabella's master key to unlock the secret room. They are surprised that it opened. Then they went inside. It was a small, long, rectangular room. They looked around the room, and Don finds a hatch that leads to the basement. It was dark, so Gilda used a lamp that was there, and they went down to the basement. When they entered the small basement, there was more bookshelves stacked with books and toys that belonged to kids who had been shipped out long ago under Isabella's care. Among the toys was little bunny, Connie's favorite stuffed rabbit. This scares Don and Gilda. They look for more information in the small room and discover something else which Gilda points out. There was a communication device system Isabella uses to contact HQ. Gilda questions it that if the secret room was a break room, would Isabella hide this from them? Gilda and Dawn found the truth they were looking for, but still kept up with the bad people lie. All the toys they were that were in the room belonged to kids who have left them toys were taken from them before they met their fate at the gate. But this made Don question how did Norman and Emma knew that they were bad people? Don question how did Ray know that they will be doomed if Sister Crone or Isabella found out about the escape plan? Don thought maybe Isabella is more dangerous than they thought, that Connie and all the other siblings that were shipped were in fact dead. Before Gilda could answer Don, there was a dump upstairs, realizing Isabella was in her office. In Chapter 18, Prepared, Isabella returned to her office. Don and Gilda worried in the basement. Gilda wondered and calmed down. She thought of what Norman, Emma, or Ray would do in a situation like this. Gilda then realized about what Emma and Norman said. She wondered if Connie is actually in ways Emma telling a, a cool lie. She did, just couldn't believe it. Don comes up with a way to escape the library without Isabella noticing that they were there. Don said that they would go through the washroom into Isabella's room and so they won't so they went. They turned back to Emma, Norman and Ray heading down to the dinner hall. Not the dining hall. Norman said it was too be suspected suspected of Ray would have none of no of the Morris code in the books. Ray was surprised for Emma that she noticed the book plates. Emma then randomly admit that she did not notice them and that it was actually Phil who brought a brought it to her attention. It was also one of the Morris codes with Phil under it would say it run. In the children's books, Phil was reading.
and when she looked into the other books to come up where they were now, once they got to the dinner hall, they noticed that Don and Gilda were not there. She worried, Emma worried Ray and I mean, I think it's supposed to be. No, I, mean, I don't know what I wrote in the script. Anyway, never mind. Ray and Emma right away. They went looking for them. Norman checked at the pantry and they were not there. The panel then goes to Isabelda, who hears a noise coming from outside of her office. She opens the office door to see Eugene, one of the dirty eight Grace Field House kids, who had found Isabella's master key on the ground. This surprised Isabella as she knew there was not a hole in her pocket for it to fall out. She became suspicious. She then goes back to Emma as she finds Don and Gilda behind her with worried and suspicious faces. Emma was relieved that Don and Gilda were okay. Ray then asked where they were, but before they could answer, too many of the kids were looking at them with curious faces, so Norman said they will talk about it later. At night, Don and Gilda met with Emma and Ray and Norman in the dining hall. Then they popped the question that they went to Isabella's secret room. Emma asked why they go in. Gilda says Don had picked locked it. the key from Isabella. Norman asked if Isabella noticed. Gilda said they returned the key by putting it on the ground once the kids one of the kids to find them and return to Isabella as if she dropped it. Ray said that Don and Gilda acted stupidly. Ray said what if there was a camera or a bug or even an alarm in the secret room could have been set off even if they went even when they went inside. Ray said there that if Isabella or Sister Crone found out they will before Ray was finished, this Don interrupted him and asked what ha what would happen. Don asked if they all would be killed. As he said, Connie and the other siblings of Gracefield House were all dead. No one was alive, as Emma, Norman, and Ray said. Emma then said she was sorry and disproved them that what they said was about the bad people was a lie. Don asked what they were hiding and Emma revealed about the demons and, as the bad people in Graceful House being a farm. They were well being raised to be eaten. Emma also revealed that Ray was a spy for Isabel. Don put everything together. They knew what was going to happen to Connie once she left the house with Isabella. Then Don started to laugh. Don got mad and punched Norman in the face and then punches Ray in the face. He grabs Emma by the shirt and almost punches her too until Gilda snaps him out of it out of his anger and rage. Don puts Emma down and breaks down into tears. He said he was he was and Gilda were such a burden that they were weak and useless that Norman, Emma and Ray felt like they needed to protect them. Don and Gilda also understand they realized that th they lied in the first place. Don said he thought they were relying on them, but now he feels like they were just, he was just frustrated. They were, but he was just frustrated in, that they were fusion and pathetic. He knew Gilda and him were not smart as Emma, Norman, and Ray were. In question, aren't they family? Aren't they siblings that they could trust? Don just wanted them to have a little faith in him and Gilda. He didn't. He didn't apologize as now he was acting like a weirdo. So he decided to leave to cool off and collect his thoughts on the truth. Gilda came right behind him. This left Emma, Norman, and Ray in the dining hall feeling bad for lying. Emma said she was sorry and questioned when she made the lie. Did she really have enough faith in Don and Yoga in the first place? Ray said she certainly didn't think of them as equals, but she made the right choice to lie. He, as he knew, Emma was pretended on what they were going to say. 
as they would not believe her about the demons in the house being a farm and that they were being that they were being raised for food. The panel goes off to Don and Gilda. Don tells Gilda why he was upset. He was taking his frustration on Emma Norman Gray that they treated them like weaklings. But Don said he made them lie because he wouldn't believe them right away. That he could not do anything about what happened to Connie and that he was an ignorant and powerless to do anything. Don said he was frustrated and that he was truly a weakling. Gilda understand and comforted Don. Back with the others, Emma said she was going to apologize to Don and Gilda and she was sorry for being naive. Emma thought it was thanks to them that now they know a way to help everyone escape from the farm. But unknown to Emma, Ray, Norman, Gilda, and Dawn, Sister Crone was watching them and saw everything. In Chapter 19, Doomed, Emma went to go find Dawn and Gilda and apologized to them for being so naive and not f fully grasping the situation to believe in them. Behind her was Norman and Ray, Norman wanting to apologize as well. Don said he was sorry for punching Norman and Ray in the face. Don asked if Norman will be okay. Norman said he is fine, but Don protested to this saying he should get treated. Get treated. Gilda also apologized for how she and Don acted out on their own. Don agreed it would have been obvious that Ray would get mad at this right away. Gilda and Don both apologize to Ray and Norman. Norman gets Ray to forgive them, but Ray said it would be fine, saying if it were worse happened, he would find a way to take care of it. One of the panels makes a flashback that shows Connie holding Little Bunny and him pushing, putting the note that said rope, Norman's bed, next to Isabella's door. We also apologize for the things he said. Emma again said now that they were all being honest to them, put, pointing out the possible dangers the outside world would bring has it was all full of, since it was all full of enemies. That Don and Gilda were still and asked if Don and Gilda were still willing to run away with them. Don and Gilda looked at one another and said yes, they were ready to take on the obstacle. Don said that they will work harder so they can trust them more, and Gilda asked them to let them help the best they could. Emma thanks them. Norman reveals the next part of the plan was to scope out the vicinity of the place. And to note this, they were like showing signs of yelling, so at each other and I'm surprised that none of that rugged off the monster of the house or one of the kids. Forget about Crone, she was got something up her sleeve in her pockets of schemes. So let's get back to the story. It then switched it to the next day on Wednesday, November 1st. With Norman and Emma on cleaning duty, Emma told Norman that she was happy to see to, to finally like um to, I mean to finally tell Don and Gilda the actual truth. But one thing bugged Norman, it was how to trick Ray so everyone can escape. By deceiving Ray as he only wants Don and Gilda to escape with them and not everyone else, as it will be impossible, as he puts it. And it then gets Norman out how to this dot and explains that she figured out a way to help everyone escape. It then goes over where Emma already tells Norman this plan. She told Norman this was the only way to get Isabella off guard and help everyone escape. Norman agrees that it might be the only way to deceive Way in taking everyone with them. He and he also thinks Ray might have something else he is not telling Emma and Norman. 
that is keeping them alive. He also wonders how long did he knew about the secret of Wakefield House. Norman goes inside the house where Don gives him the objects Norman requested, those being detergent and herbicide. Don said he sold them just as he requested. He also questions what Norman is going to use the herbicide and detergent for. Norman just says it will just come in handy for an investigation he was working on. This confuses Don and Gilda. Outside, Gilda asks if they were going to go scope out the wall. What will they do about the tracking devices? Emma said they just have to make sure they don't check them. Emma explains simply they will create a situation where Sister Colin and his mother Isabella cannot check their trackers. While that is going on, they will have the others quickly suspect the area. Norman said that Ray will be the one stalling Isabella. In fact, Ray, with Ray and Isabella in the infirmary, where Isabella responds to what Ray had told her, how he got punched in the face was from a fight he got into with Norman. Isabella asked Ray if she had something more important to tell her. He, Ray simply replied, saying Norman was going with planning to kill her. Ray explains Norman is collecting everything he can get to use on Isabella to kill her. He then goes on saying that he told Isabella Norman it was too risky and wrong and Isabella asked him is that how he got the booze? And, and Ray confirmed it. Of course, all what Ray was saying was a lie, so he can trick Isabella in working on stopping Norman's fake murder plot. This buyed them time for him to on the inspection that was tomorrow. He also reminded Isabella that he wanted Norman and Emma to live at 12 years old without any inconveniences. Of course, this was also a lot. Isabella says that all he was has to do was report, and Emma and Ray said, yeah. Ray asked if Isabella had something else in mind she needed to tell him. Isabella, with a smile on her face, says she will let him know early about the next date for shipment. She said this shipment was not regular and will not be a regular one until next month. Ray understand what she meant and said that the next shipment was finally him. In the forest, Yoga, Don, Emma, and Norman were heading to the wall. Don asked even if Ray was dealing with Isabella, what will they do with about Sister Crown? Gilda says if she found out, they will be doomed for sure. No one told them they don't have to worry as he had a plan to deal with Crown. No one died to himself on what they needed to do. What they needed to do was inspect the vicinity, plan to escape, suppress the two adults, and escape with all 38 kids. But as they were walking through, Crone was watching beside a tree and saw and they saw her. Norman tried to act like Crone needed something from them. Crone said she saw it, that she saw their conversation in the dining hall last night. This feared everyone and thought they were going to die until Sister Crone asked if they could join forces with her. In Chapter 20, Alliance, Sister Khan asked them if they want to join forces with her. Emma and the others were confused. They thought her plan was to find all targets in the escape plan and ship them out immediately. Norman knew that what Crone was doing was really up to and asked the others to play along.
Crone agrees, saying that both had similar motives. She said they want to escape the Gracefield house, and she wants to become mom of the house, and drag Isabella down from her position, from her mom position. They were confused on what Crone meant by mom position. Crone says she was telling the truth as she says she wants to break free, too. Crone revealed she had a number tattooed on her neck as well, revealing she was just like them once, and revealed the management system of Gracefield House. She revealed that when girls fulfill certain conditions and live to the age of 12 years old, they have two paths to choose, continue as they were set to die, or aim in becoming a mom. Sean asked what were the conditions. Sean revealed them to be the scores in the test hat are above a certain number, meaning the girl has to be really smart. And that and the mom of the house at the time recommends them. If you meet the circuit the requirements, you can only survive without escaping. Though this was the only available for girls. And Crone said it was not a good path to choose as she reveals a scar on her chest. She says they they made sure they will never leave the area by implanting a chip in their heart. So if the mother or sister steps out of the area that surrounds Gracefield, an electrical current will be sent through the heart and stop the heart completely killing them and send a transmitter to the higher-ups. This proven that to Norman that they were right on how it was impossible to kill the adults because they are legally set to dead once becoming a mom or a sister. Crone says she can only live on the farms. This is why she wants to live best way possible by becoming a mom. She said as mom, even acting as a face a face human, playing monster in in the house surrounded by a warm family of kids and loving and affection for her was the best she can have. The only one in a, in her way of getting to her global I mean her goal was Isabella. Crone wants Isabella to be moved. If the kids escape, Isabella will be blamed for it and she'll go gone she'll be gone for good. Beneficial for Crone to take the mom position. Gilda asked if Crone was not going to ship them out. Crone says she she won't sense they will they have the same enemy, that being Isabella. Why not cooperate with her? But Norman saw something else in Norman in Crone. She thought he thought to himself. Crone could not just hand them over without evidence. And Crone was not and Crone was not as trusted to be to the demons as Isabella was. Crone only only choice was to get close to the targets. Norman suggests Crone's real plan was to get close enough to collect evidence. That way she can get rid of Isabella and all of them. And Crone thought ev every very well in Norman that she knew that he knew what she was actually planning. Crone asked him to join forces with her. Norman was going to shake Crone's hand in agreement before Emma st stepped in. She asked Crone where where was her guarantee that she was not going to betray them. Crone asked if Emma still didn't trust her. Emma just asked her to answer. Crone answered that it was all had to deal with Ray. If Ray were to tell Isabella on Crone, they can destroy Crone. But if Crone tells Isabella what Ray was really up to, she can destroy Ray. She sa said this way, neither both of them can betray one another. Emma said, okay, and the deal was set. 
Kong asks if Kong was raised at the farm too. Kong said she, yes, the same grace field house, but in a sector called Plant Free. Which really did not make sense just yet. Kong said she was willing to share any information she can only tell. This is the proof of her goodwill and asks if they were willing to come to her room tonight. This frightened Yoda, but Crone told her not to worry as she was not mad at Yoda. In fact, she was grateful to her. Crone pointed out it was Dawn and Yoda who led Crone to tell more who the targets were without them knowing. She then left them. Dawn and Gilda felt bad, but Norman cheered them up, saying now they don't need to distract Crown anymore during this inspection. We will be able to distract Isabella, and they will be able to focus on what they need to do. This just made Emma mad about what Crone said. The best way possible to live for herself? was to continue watching children get killed. Emma said that Crone used to be like one of them, does not think of anything of the lives of the children at Gracefield. Emma told Emma Crone still plans on getting them shipped out, but she can't do it right now. Crone does not have the evidence, authority, and trust to get them shipped, which she has no none of those. Getting trust and authority is not easy to get a hand of, as long as they don't give Sister Crone any evidence she can use against them, she will have no choice but to let them escape. Since Crone does not have evidence, authority, and trust to get them shipped, which she has none of those things, getting Trust and authority is not easy to get a hold of as long as they don't give Sister Crony any evidence she can use against them, she still have no choice but to let them escape. They both knew only their real attentions are, even if it was to pretend they can form an alliance for a while now. At night, Norman and Emma went to Crone's room, where Crone was ready to tell them everything they need to know. In Chapter 21, Blatant Trap, before it begins, there's a flashback of Crone when she was young. She came to where she is. She decides that the woman known as Grandma, Grandma told a young Crone the only way to survive was to complete. It then goes back to the present time to where Crone let Emma and Norman into her room to let, tell them everything th about Gracefield House. Th hours before, it shows a warrior Gilda thinking of Emma and Norman's decision on going to see Crone. No one told her not to worry as they know what their, en their enemy truly was. To gain their trust and obtain evidence, they will not give her the truth and evidence she will need to turn them in. They said there is a guarantee she will not tell the full truth. Rowling agreed she might put lies in here and there, but no one said he will like to get as much information he needs. And he also wanted to mislead her on her on their intentions. So which brings to where Emma and Norman Way were. Inside Crone's room, Crone was ready to tell them everything. Crone agreed to tell them about the farm and headquarters too. Norman also questions what that no Crone will tell them how the adults feel about killing the children. Crone gave him a look and says anything they want to know. Emma asks Crone to show them the device that shows where they are via the tracking devices. Crone showed them the device, which looked like an average pocket watch. Crone revealed it can show the current location of someone with the tracking, with the tracking device, but it doesn't tell 
you who it actually is. Cohen asked how they knew they had tracking devices on them. Norman said Isabella showed it once to them. Cohen said they don't know where they were located or how to break them, and that why and that's why they can't escape. Norman and Emma knew where the tracking devices, but lied to see what Cohen would say. They asked Cohen where they were. Then how to break where they were and how to break them. She said it was in their left ear. She says she didn't know how to break them, but did mention when one is broken, it notifies the tracker of the mom or sister and headquarters. This proves what Ray said about breaking the tracking devices, and proves Crown was not lying about it being in the ear. Crown said they will have to take off the tracking devices. And not break them. And the only way they could were gonna do that is either cut off the ears or feel find something to take to take it out. Norman says they will not they, be there will not be a decent blade in the house to do it. Not even the kitchen knife was helpful. Norman also said there will be no medicine outside, and he would not want to their escape with, from blood loss or an infection. Crown said they can use a, spa- a scalpel in their infirmary. The scalpel apparently hardly, is hardly ever used, and there are some medical equipment that can last up to five kids. Crown said she will lend them the key and teach them how to use the medical equipment needed to cut off the left ear. She asked if they had any other questions. Emma asked what was Crone's age. Crone complained how rude it was to ask, but she let it slide and said that she was 26 years old, indicating Crone was born in 2019. No, that wasn't too long ago. 20, 2019 was not that long. Only about like one year. But anyway, back to story. She was ra- she was born and raised on the farm. She also told Isabella's age that being twenty three years twenty one years old, indicating Isabella was born in twenty fourteen. Dan Crone said she was also born on the farm in that she was and she saw it in the records. This contradicts the theory about twenty fifteen twenty fifteen. Conan and Isabel have never seen, never been outside. Norman asked if she, if she has seen the outside. Conan answered with no, but she did admit that there are humans outside. Conan explained they were made as food for the higher ups. She did admit there were humans, but they only brought supplies such as clothes and other stuff for the kids. Also. And this also told where William Norris' books came from. Crown said she had seen a human before in headquarters talking to one of the demons. Crown said there was a human who don't who don't get eaten and said you will need to get mixed in with them to keep yourself from being eaten. If this was true for Emma and Norman, the possibility of William Nerva being alive was possible. Emma asked if Crone didn't know how long the demons have been here, or how long they were, their world they lived in had been like this. They asked her more questions about the house, like security or where the farm was located. Crone said she didn't know where they were located and their security there was not a lot of it around, and she was and she was sure that there was no patrol either. Norman thought it could it was quiet, but Emma thought it was clearly a lie. Norman thought it wouldn't be that easy. Once they were done talking to Crone's questions, they were ready to head out. Crone said good night, and as Norman and Emma were about to leave, Crone thought they understand and knew what they were hiding. 
as long as Roman and Anna do not give her evidence, she will not have she will have no choice but to let them run away. So then she laughed. She admitted they knew where the tracking devices were all along and knew how to get past them. She said how impressed she was of them. Emma was shocked. She knew her and Norman chose her, their questions carefully. Cron admitted it was not just words that provided information. Cron explained how she could tell what they were really thinking, as it was so it wasn't so hard to figure out. Attitude, glaze, blinking, sweating, gestures, peoples, and pulse told all signs on how she knew what they were thinking. Crone asked why they did did tell her she knew where the tracking devices were when they and when it wasn't necessary as they already know where it was. Crone said they knew about the the name the demon with the unknown name. She then said she will tell them next time they come by. Crone let them go. She saw through instructions but she saw through their intentions but it was, she didn't get any evidence from them, which made Norman and Emma knew they need to hurry. It was now November 6th, six days before the planned escape. It switches over to Isabella in her office as she reads a book and closes it and says, I think it's about time before chapter 21 ends. In chapter 22, Bates, it was now Thursday, November 2nd, six days until the planned escape place for house with everyone. Ray went over the plan to inspect the vicinity with Dong, Yoga, Emma, and Norman. They said he will go to distract Isabella, Norman and Emma will climb the wall to inspect the vicinity, and Don and Yoga will wait outside and look out the area where they could see the south window on the second floor. Ray says if he fails to distract Isabella, Don and Yoda will alert Norm Emma and Norman to cancel the inspection. Ray was sure Isabella was suspicious and thinks she has not found anything out yet, but does not want to be optimistic about it and said there is a possibility his distraction will not work. Don asks Will if they were to happen, what will if they were to I mean, what will happen? Will they be given up the inspection? Ray said it will depend on the situation for the time being. Ray told everyone to listen. He said it will be all over when Isabella thinks them as uncontrollable. He said Isabella's goal was to ship them out at a mature age, that being 12 years old. He, she also intends to ship out the ones who ones with the perfect scores, that being him, Emma, and Norman. Ray said Isabella took care of them through growth and would never want to ship them out permanently. She told about, he told about their no, no being regular shipment until next month. So as long as they keep making Isabella think that they are controllable, Isabella, Ray and he will not be a mature, a mature age until July. I meant January. And if anything were to happen to cancel the inspection quickly, all this to keep it a secret. Once Ray was done speaking of the plan, Norman asked Ray if he could speak with him. They went with Emma to the bedroom inside the house. Norman told Ray about what happened the other night with Emma when they went to see Sister Crone. They told him she figured out they can break the tracking devices. Ray was shocked by this, and Norman asked that he would like to move the escape plan to another date and asked Ray when he could break the tracking devices. Ray moved a bedside table 
and brought out a black box from a hidden spot. Inside the box, Ray explained Isabella gave this to him while Norman and Emma were visiting Sister Crone. It was for selling them out as the one working on the plan. Inside the box was an instant camera, which had which had all the necessary parts Ray needed to make to break the tracking devices. We said depending if the they can expect the vicinity, he agreed to move up the escape date. He also said it will would be ne- a nuisance if Crown finds out what they are uh, what they wanted to hide. Norman agreed if Crown were to find out the method of Ray's to break the tracking devices, it will be evidence that Crone can use as evidence to indicate their rebellion. Emma said about before she obtains to evidence, they they need to finish their inspection quickly. Norman said they could not give their give her evidence. Ray also reminds them not to change on how they will deal with Isabella. They will they will deal with Crone separately. With Crone, she went over all the possibilities of them to break the tracking devices. Her conclusion was to start a search. Next picture shows our cute little Phil running through the halls until he finds Crone in one of the rooms and questions her what she was doing. Crone was looking for evidence covers up that she was looking for something. Phil says okay and continues running through the halls. But Crone was not able to find what she was looking for. With Ray, it was revealed in a flashback that he showed Norman and Emma a spot he used to hide his rewards he got from Isabella. A crawl space under the floorboards on a night of a nightstand. This was a spot that Alyssa nightstand now and Ray said she will not be able to find it really easily. Ray said he will give Crone different type of bait. Be- back with Crone's search, Crone finds a note behind the nightstand. Emma and Norman wonder what type of bait Ray did Ray set up for Crone. Crone read the note to be shocked as the note reveals something that could put distrust in Isabella. Crone wonders if she shows this to Grandma or someone higher, this will be a hit for her sure. Crone just couldn't believe her eyes and just needed to find out if it was true. Ray wondered with this he can invest Crone away from the escape plan for a while. Enjoy Isabella's attention. This they will not suspect a thing of the escape occurring soon. And before they realize it, they will be over the wall. Back with Crone, she went through the books and figured out what the note meant. Crone was had a smile on her face, found the note meant. It had Isabella's second weakness. And if things go well for sure for her, she can get the mom position and ship out Emma, Norman, and Ray and Gilda and Dawn. She has finally obtained physical evidence. But something puzzled Crone. How did Ray know this? Did Isabel tell him? When she could figure this out, she heard a knock at her door, she, which caught her off guard. She quickly hid her books she had on her in the suitcase and went to, to answer the door and found Isabella standing in the front of it. Isabella had a knife behind her back. When she revealed it, Crone thought she was going to use it on out of her and become scared. But it was revealed Isabella also had a letter with a wax seal on it. Isabella had from headquarters to told Crone to open it. She said it was unfortunate, but just how she it was, and then said goodbye before the chapter ended and Crone in a shock 
after reading the letter. In chapter 23, Destroy, Isabella tells Crone to open the letter. In the letter, it appointed Crone to be mom of plant four. Crone was surprised at this and Isabella claimed it to be true. Isabella said there was a sudden opening for a mom in plant four and that she had been recommending Crone for some time. And that Crone had to leave immediately as Grandma was waiting for her at the gate. Crone sensed this as a trap of some kind. Crone thought of what was making Isabel do this. Was she, was she in the way? Or did Isabel realize something Crone was doing? But either way, that was the case. Crone knew Isabella was trying to get rid of her. The problem was the letter looked like to be fake, but Isabella might have told something that allowed such a thing to happen, but Crone was doing it, going to take it the risk and tell what's been going on. She was not going to let this go in Isabella's favor. Phil comes running with one of the kids of Gracefield at his age and he tells that the food is ready and Isabel and asks Isabel where Crone was. Isabella tells Crone is in her room, but then changes it that Crone has work to do and they should eat without her. Crone was actually heading to the gate where she met with grandma. Crone reveals the letter to her and tells everything she needs. She admitted she had no evidence of the escape, but begged her to believe they must take action. Crone was actually heading to the gate where she met with Grandma. Crone reveals the letter to her and tells everything she knew. She admitted she had no evidence of the escape, but begged her to believe they must take action. Grandma says if the children were under control, there would be no issue. Grandma said the problem was her. It was Crone. She would not let Crone get away, get in the way. Grandma told that Isabella was a very important pawn to her and that Crone was inefficient to take the place as mom after Isabella. She started to laugh as she realized she was being used the whole time. She knew she had she lost, but a long time ago. From the very beginning, she had no choice, no chance of winning from the very start. At the at the Gracefield house, as everyone thanks for the food, Crone's life flashes across the op the op options and was and was getting ship and getting shipped to take a part path to become mom. As they had to do was complete. Complete. The small society called a farm, which they had to continue to support from, from the ones that ruled them. It was only the sole way for a human to survive in the world they lived in. In one of Crone's flashbacks, a curious Crone overhears a conversation with a man and a demon. When the man left, a pen was accidentally dropped, which Crone picked up, and there were initials on the pen, WM. Crone knew she was going to die, and she says she will make a contour bow by helping the children escape, and she didn't care if it was only Isabella she was going to take down. She knew the pen she had was no ordinary pen. It shows another flashback of Crone at the house, putting the old pen in a dresser in hope that the children escape and destroy the awful world they lived in. And Crone saw the beautiful sky, and then Crone was dead. Chapter 24, Inspection Part 1 Chapters 24 and 25 are put into two parts. In Chapter 24, Part 1 of the Inspection, Norman and Emma head to the wall to decide on the escape route to make a full primary inspection of the area. 
back at the house, Gilda and Don watched the window on the south side of the Gracefield house to look out when Ray gives him a signal that he did not was not able to distract Isabella and to inform Emma and Norman to cancel the inspection. Gilda hoped that everything will go smoothly and Ray got Isabella to talk with him. He went up the stairs with her. Ray became suspicious as he didn't see Sister Crone anywhere. That is when Isabella revealed she had gotten rid of Crone. In shock, Ray went to Crone's room only to find it vacant. Isabella came up behind him and said she didn't need Crone anymore and that it that was why she got rid of her. Isabella says her deal with Ray was over. Shocked by this, Ray said he was still useful to her. Isabella agreed, but also revealed that he was a useful dog, even it for being a liar and a traitor. There was no faith fault in Ray. It was unfortunate for her to end as the suspicion was changed. Isabella asked Ray to forgive her what she was going to do about him due to him and everyone. Back outside, Gilda and Dawn hoped everything went smoothly as they didn't see a single sign from Ray. But this shocked Gilda, pointing out that Isabella had come outside. This confused them because she because then because Ray didn't even give them a signal that the distraction didn't work. Something was wrong. Don told Gilda to wait outside as Don goes to find what happened inside the house and to Ray. That is, that he will let her know if anything happens. It's revealed that Isabella had locked Ray inside the vacant room that once was Crone's room. Ray tried to burst through the door, but he it was locked. From the, ins- from the outside. He knew he drew the chair at it, but they snapped in two. It seemed Isabella had had found out. She got rid of Sister Crone to not get her in to not get her in the way. All Ray knew he had to get out of the room. So he tried to kick the door again. Unknown to him, Dong would, had opened the door to let him out, giving us one of the most, and what I say, the most funniest faces from Dawn. So at this point, Ray basically broke down the door. Ray quickly said sorry to Dawn, but Dawn told him there was no time to lose as they needed to save we need to stop Isabella. Join up with Gilda telling her to come as they go stop mom. Ray needed to get to Norman and Emma quickly as it was the last chance to inspect the vicinity. With Emma and Norman, they noticed someone was following them. Norman told Emma to draw the bag that was, had a rope in it into the bushes and hide it. Isabella revealed herself. Norman acted like nothing has happened that they that beyond to explore as Ray, Dawn and Gilda raced over Ray saying to himself that they need to complete the inspection regardless of Isabella in their way. This ends part one of the inspection. In chapter 25 inspection part two, Dawn and Emma were confused why Isabella was there and wondered what happened to Don, Gilda, and Ray, as they did not report to them as planned. They wondered what Isabella was planning to do. One thing they thought was being shipped out immediately. Isabella revealed that it has been 10 years they lived together, and this was the first time they had talked to each other without acting. Isabella acted stranger. Norman and Emma kept silent as Isabella gave up resisting. Isabella recaps on how life at Gracefield is a peaceful place and that they can die with a satisfied feeling until the day they die. Isabella says that escaping was impossible as only despair was waiting across the wall. Norman and Emma 
noticed that Isabella was not going to ship them out immediately. Norman knew Isabella still wanted control over them, so she will not, not ship them out quickly. This was their only chance to inspect the wall, as Isabella seemed to be now waiting to control them directly. Norman knew they should not give up. Isabella looked like she knew everything. This raised the trail down in Yoda being our most. Norman knew Isabella could not ship them out immediately, just for inspecting the vicinity. Norman suspects they must be special, that they, they are high quality goods that she can not pluck so easily than others. But Norman didn't care. He says he will not show any fear and will, not, and will help everyone escape and protect Emma. He did not care of what the world, the world was like outside. And all he cared about was wanting to live. Norman then announced to Isabella he would do what she said and not be a good boy anymore. They made their move to trick Isabella. Emma went after Isabella trying to reach for her tracking device while Norman ran to the wall to complete the inspection. As Emma fought with Isabella, Norman grabbed the bag of rope but as he ran to the wall, he heard a crack and looked it back to see Isabella had broken Emma's leg. Norman stood in shock as Isabella came up, came down Emma, who was crying in pain. Isabella then asked Norman if he realized that she will not, she she will always control them and protect them, that they were in fact special, and special food for only a certain special one to eat. As Emma won't be able to move for a while, she asked them to wait until tomorrow. As she got a notice from headquarters, she revealed that Norman's ship date had been set. Okay, now we get to my thoughts on Volume 3. Now, what did I thought of Volume 3 of the Promised Neverland manga? It was good, and we got some funny and terrifying face expressions out of the cast. Most notably, Crone, as this was her last debut being alive in the manga, and also the anime. Can't forget that. There's comparison from what the anime only that only that shows up that does not show up in the manga, which had a particular scene in the anime, like in chapter 17. In the anime episode 4, warning there's a spoiler ahead, Don and Gilda going into Isabella's office and sneaking into the secret room when it arrives to the cliffhanger in episode 6, it was found out that it was not Isabella at the door but good old Phil playing hide and seek. In the manga, does this does not happen you as you can see so the so that it was only an anime only the second anime only is crone's doll that it, it, that she stomps on and damages and rips its head off people say it was not in the manga and for people who just getting to into the manga and just heard of this i can confirm the doll is not in the manga so that doll is anime only. So I know the series of reviews haven't got a lot of views, which I'm okay with. As long as people can enjoy them as much as I did making them, I'm okay whatever like or comment I get. Speaking of which, as I'm waiting writing this on the script of the review, it took me about like two to three weeks to finish it. So you better enjoy it. Because you not because not a lot of my works went into this, so yeah, yeah. It will, like, I put a lot of work into this to make it really good. Also, might not be so much of a dramatic surprise and dislike with my face expressions for like some parts because I watched it all chuff out episodes of the anime on Netflix, 
So I know what happens from the part of the manga and probably in the other chapters of the jailbreak arc. So I made a task for myself. Since the Promised Forest arc is the next to become season 2 of the Promised Neverland anime, I will not watch the anime or the dub until well, when the dub comes out until I finish the arc that is based on the capture. The, so I can capture my face expressions perfectly to make the other's reviews enjoyable to the best I can do. I don't know if I told you this. I just, I don't know why I'm even telling you this, but I just thought I'm just going to tell you this anyway. So I just do this and like the script and all that stuff and probably stopped it type, typing this out. Because it's getting awkward. Anyways, that is my thoughts on Volume 3. And yeah, that's a woozy one. I'll be back with Volume 4 when I get it from my local library. So anyway, see you around. Bye-bye.